Hi, and welcome to Six Steps to a Six-Figure Income as a Perfect Personal Trainer. My name is Val Fiat. I'm our Client Services Director with Perfect Personal Training. I also lead our Clinical Research Department. And with the American Council on Exercise, I am an exam contributor. I write and edit uh, with the, uh, our, our personal trainer, health coach exams, and some of the others as well. Okay, so the travel radius, professional bio, and availability. These are things I just want to talk about briefly before we dive in to the six steps to earning a six-figure income. First of all, as a perfect personal trainer, you need your travel radius, your professional bio, and your availability to be appropriate for your contract. Make sure every aspect of your travel radius is ideal. Uh, consider changing gas prices, road conditions, everything, but make sure that every single area in your travel radius is one that you can get to effectively because we can set you up with a very long-term contract with clients anywhere in that travel radius. Uh, keep your availability current and long-term. I would really advise that you have at least a year of availability and that you just keep going in and making changes as necessary. A lot of people don't feel comfortable with that. You're welcome to do it whichever way you'd like. Just keep in mind, if you only show a month or two of availability, our system has to assume that in a month or two you're disappearing, that you're taking a new job, you're, you're doing whatever else, you're just not that interested. So we're very unlikely to schedule you if you're not showing very long-term availability because we give our clients long-term programs. That's what we do. Also, keep your professional biography and credentials updated. As you gain new skill sets, you do want to have that reflected so you can better sell yourself and we can better market you. <clears throat> okay, so let's dive in. We've got six great steps here. Step one, keep your trust rating high. If you're not familiar with how our trust rating works, the bottom line is it increases and decreases based on your level of connectivity with PPT and our clientele. If you miss one of our communications, if you don't read an email or a text from us, we know it. If you don't reply to an email, a text, or a phone call within three hours, you actually do lose some of your trust rating. It does drop a bit. Now, some people have said, wow, three hours, you know, I'm jam-packed. I'm busy with appointments. I might have two 90 minutes back-to-back. -back. Yeah, we, we understand that. But sending a quick text message to any of our PPT numbers or a very quick email to info at Perfect Personal Training just to say, hey, got your message. We'll respond again shortly it that will help that shows us we won't lower your trust rating if you do that that will show us that our remote workforce is getting our messages is understanding and nothing slipping through the cracks so always try to reply especially within three hours during a normal business day uh, it's gonna help keep your trust rating high also when you redeem sessions here the third bullet point you really need to redeem those within 24 hours or even less uh, if it's the end of the pay period. Get those redeemed with specific entries on time. When you wait, when you, you don't get something redeemed within 24 hours, you really hurt PPT's ability to reach out to those clients as needed. If we want to send them a reminder, a card, or any, anything we need to do, we can't do that if we're not being timely. So we need you to redeem, preferably immediately after the session ends, okay? Um, again, with specific entries as well. Now, your, your trust rating also does fall if client feedback is not real high. So if your client says, yeah, I like my trainer, things are good, that's not actually good. That's a bad sign. We should have uh, ranting and raving clients, which we normally have, talking about how great their trainer is, and this, this person's just changed my life, and I learn something new every day. That should be your norm. If that's not your norm, you've got a problem and your trust rating is probably falling, and we're probably not scheduling you much. We're, we're probably not doing much to really fill your schedule. So you'll never make $100,000 a year with us if, we, if you're not keeping a high enough trust rating. It's just not going to happen. Uh, selling percentage should be very high. It should be around 100%, maybe a little bit less in some cases. Uh, sometimes corporate accounts and such can be a little bit, little bit tougher to sell initially. Um, but generating referrals, generating high feedback, all very important things. <clears throat> By the way, before I go further, I should say, for some of you in our premium areas, you're probably thinking $100,000 a year doesn't sound like much. Uh, this video, the concept of the $100,000, 
it is really more of an annual income for our standard areas. Those of you that are in the premium areas where you are paid better, yeah, this, this is for you, it's probably more like about 130, $130,000, $140,000 a year. So I, I should point that out before we get into step two. All right, so step two, win trust with your presentation. Uh, this might sound a little bit funny to some people, but casual type B personalities rarely do well as our personal trainers. They just don't have the same kind of uh, statistical feedback that we get from our more detail-oriented, wake up with a big purpose, uh, really focused, more kind of type A people. So I, I hate to break it down that way, but it is true. When we really look at our stats, it's the trainers who are uh, just more disciplined, more regimented. They don't have a real casual kind of approach. They're very specific. Those are the ones that just do phenomenally better. They get much better ranting and raving clients about how great they are than those who are more casual. Uh, also, being healthy and fit is a big way to improve your presentation. Uh, you can't be a healthy role model. You can't encourage and inspire someone to be fit and healthy if you yourself don't come across that way. So I definitely recommend look your best and, and be excited. And, and don't, don't be an average person. Be something of a superhero. You know, be that high energy, really well put together, kind of shiny, uh, spirited person. You know, and again, being fit is certainly part of that. When you're that person, people really buy into you. When you seem like an average Joe, like everybody else that a client sees in the workplace, they're probably not going to stay with you. They're not going to keep wanting to re-sign with you because you're not, you're not taking them out of their norm. You're, you're not really seeming like, uh, like this incredible role model that they can, that they can uh, reach. So pride in your business skills is the third bullet point here. This is really important. You see two kinds of business people. You see the kind that just go about their, their day and they're not necessarily trying to prove anything to anyone. They're just comfortable in who they are and they're doing their thing. And that sounds nice, but it's a whole lot nicer when you're going out of your way to show people how much you care. You're showing your clients how concerned you are about being timely, uh, sending follow-ups, having reminders in your phone, knowing their birthday, keeping track of all their data, remembering offhand when the next date is going to be to do fitness assessments again, to do retesting. And, um, and, and to keep all their information in mind, to know their kids' names and things like that, to remember their likes and dislikes. These are important things that you should not just do, but you should take pride in. If you want to make $100,000 a year or more, again, more if you, uh, especially with those of you in the premium areas, you need to be able to do these things. You need to stop for a couple of minutes and look over your client's data before you walk into that session. Also, be heavily involved in regular research. Every week, take time out to, to research uh, all the new findings in the clinical fitness sciences. Uh, read from medical journals. There are so many medical journals. Just pick a few. Read from those. Maybe every couple of months, you, you swap them out for other ones so you can get a little bit more variety. Certainly read from ACSM and ACE and Cooper Institute. I think that goes without saying. But if you're not reading on a regular basis, and that, that should be, I'd say, at least bi-weekly for a couple of hours, at least, that you're never going to be a really top trainer. You're not going to be at that cutting edge of having all the newest data, especially for clients with, with medical conditions or clients uh, in a certain level of progression where there's some data behind that. Be familiar with that information and talk to your clients about it. It's it's such an important way to show your clients how connected you are. Finally, each meeting should be special and should be a big step forward. No such thing as a typical session. That should not exist. Each meeting, each session should be special, should have a theme, should have a lesson. Talk about something important. Make it a big step forward. You, you absolutely need to do this so that you know your clients aren't going to end up walking away from you and costing you money and again, hurting your reputation with PPT, your trust rating we spoke about. All right, step three of six is to take charge. This one's huge. This is absolutely huge. You've got to take charge. Too many personal trainers are giving sound bite advice. They're saying, hey, eat more fruits and vegetables. And they're not being specific and they're not taking charge. They're not being leaders. 
Think of yourself as a corporate leader. Think of yourself as a CEO uh, who's getting paid big bucks. Does that person focus on the details or are they casual and kind of easygoing? They're not casual. So in this example here, uh, where we have the quote, try to get more omega-3s. Okay, a lot of personal trainers would get away with that. They would casually say that to a client during a corporate fitness session at a, at a big gym. They'd say, try to get more omega-3s. Now think of it this other way, okay? Take this suggestion. Uh, I'd suggest that we set goals toward consuming a more appropriate amount of omega-3s. Would you like to explore a plan of action to do so? So, so think about that. When you, when you say to a client, hey, here's my suggestion, I think we should set a goal. So we're formalizing it. We're not just talking about it. We're formalizing it toward consuming a more appropriate amount of omega-3s. Not just more. Not just, hey, I'm going to get a little bit more. But, but getting toward a goal there, getting towards a particular amount. And then you ask them, say, is that something you're ready for? Is that something you want to get into or talk more about? This is a much better way to communicate with your client. It, it's a more open-ended question, and it lets your client tell you something. It leaves the door open to the client saying, you know what, no, I, I don't really want to do that. Or, uh, yeah, maybe in the future, not right now, I've got too much going on. Leave that door open to them. You know, don't uh, let, let the client still be in the driver's seat. As much as we're going to be leaders, you need to compromise with them. So talk to them about the benefits, the how-to, you know, how are we going to go about getting more omega-3s and how many more do we want and why do we need more omega-3s what's the benefit of that and send email reminders I can't tell you how critical reminders are by email or by phone send examples you might have a passionate and inspiring story of a former client or a current client or even if it's not your own client uh, grab a PPT video or grab grab something online but share with people share with your clients what it is that, what's the incentive to their making a certain change? Talk about it, instill a plan of action, and again, take charge. Goal setting and taking charge are really the pinnacles of being a personal trainer. That's really the bottom line. You cannot be an effective trainer if you're not taking charge and helping them set goals and, and being that voice of reason for what we should talk about now and what maybe we hold off on, what we come back to, all right? So let's go ahead and get into step four. Set the right goals and set them the right way. Now, the stages of change, and the stages of behavioral change is the first bullet point here, and that's because you cannot drag a horse to water. Uh, much like we talked about in the last step, in step three, you, you just can't push a client into here's what you've got to do. You've got to first inspire them. So the stages of change here are a really important behavioral change model to be familiar with. You want to understand what is this client ready for? Some clients are really ready to make some nutritional changes. They're not so ready to make strength change, strength training change. They're not really ready to, to really adapt into some heavy strength training. Okay, okay, that's okay to know. So you, you play to what their strengths are at that time. You play to what they're motivated for, and you kind of shy away a little bit from what they're not feeling the motivation for. Uh, time to goal is another really important one. ACSM does a great job in a lot of their text outlines in talking about what an appropriate time to goal is. So for example, they, they have for heart attack patients, they have a, a given time to goal. It's, it's just a general guideline, you know, it, it's general, but it'll say given this amount of frequency and given this kind of program, we should have this and this kind of result after this amount of months. And each person's obviously different. Treat the patient, not the disorder. But having a time to goal is important. You can, again, find it in a lot of text on a lot of different medical conditions. And at the same time, it's so critical for the client because you need to give them that vision of what's to come and in what kind of timeline. If they don't have a timeline, they're out. They need to be motivated. When they don't feel so confident September 15th, they need to know that, hey, October 1st, though, I'm probably going to reach 27% body fat or whatever the goal is. And that kind of thing is really inspiring. It keeps people going. So let's move on to measurement, the third bullet point. Testing and measurement should be exciting and non-judgmental. It does not have to be boring. It should not be boring. Uh, it's clinical, 
but that doesn't mean it has to be boring and stuffy and unfun and something that the client's going to dread. Because if your client dreads anything, that client, you can assume, is going to leave. They're not going to stay with us. They're going to find something else if there are aspects of their program that they really don't like. Testing and measurement are sometimes those parts of the program. So keep it exciting. Even if their numbers aren't great, if we wanted 27% body fat and we're, we're 29. Okay, talk about some reasons as to why and get excited as to why we're going to change that for the future. Why we're going to just set new goals. We're going to get to that number at a later date. And here's why. And again, non-judgmental. Non-judgmental is critical, especially for the more sensitive clients. If they feel judged, if they feel that you don't think the world of them, they're not going to want you in their home. It's that easy. Nobody wants someone coming over who they essentially don't feel good about seeing. And your clients need to not feel, they need to never feel judged by you. They need to feel like a winner in your eyes. The final bullet point here is that goals can be anything measurable. I'll say this again, your goals, the client's goals, can be anything that's measurable. I gave some creative examples here, but the point is that goals are not just what we're used to in Fitness 101, okay? They're not just how many push-ups or pull-ups can you do and, uh, you know, are, are we going to get to this body composition level and things like that. It can be a lot more creative. So if somebody reports muscle soreness is usually an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10, Let's set a goal to show them how to reduce muscle soreness, and let's see if we can't get that down to a six for the next month or so. If they're not drinking enough water, let's again reaffirm their, their recommended amount of water for a day, given their body weight and activity level. And let's set a goal, let's say just for two weeks, let's drink the right amount of water, okay? For two weeks only, let's make that happen. That is a powerful tool. That's a great goal to have, to write down formally. Again, we have sheets and such for this on the staff website. But that's a great goal to have. Uh, even reducing pain levels for your clients who have any kind of pain, uh, are those with arthritis and things like that. If people have pain, let's at least see if we can get those levels down. And that's a great thing to take credit for. So they tell, they tell their friend or their spouse, hey, uh, perfect personal training, you know, I, I'm still in some pain. They haven't been able to eliminate it, but I have a lot less pain than I used to before I started. That's so critical. So set those kind of goals. you got to take charge to do that. Let's get into step five. Okay, step five says define the path and be fluid to change. Sounds like something uh, Confucius might say or Socrates or something, but um, I think the point here, although it sounds very spiritual, I think the point is a clear one. Define the path for the client, but be fluid. Let that, that path change as it needs to, and let the client know that that's okay. How often should they train with you? You know, some weeks, if they can do five sessions, that's phenomenal. Other weeks, they might get one or two. That, that's, that's okay. You know, let life get in the way sometimes if it needs to. Uh, what factors should change their fit principles? If you're a personal trainer who gets really stuck on exact numbers for everybody, I would recommend you change that way of thinking. You know, if the goal is 15 push-ups and somebody gets 14, that's, that's okay. There, there are times when that's appropriate. Exercise response, um, basically any kind of client physiology is, is a changing thing. And when we determine a plan for somebody, it's based on what we think they're going to be like that day. It's based on if they got enough hydration, if their food, their, their caloric intake, their nutrition was, was so good. All those statuses change. So I would encourage that have a, have a path and have it pretty well defined. Your program is going to be this, this, and that over the next so many weeks. But also let the client understand that things do need to change sometimes based on what they're going through in life. If someone had a real, real rough night and it was a family emergency and they got very little sleep and they missed breakfast, yeah, the, the program should change that day. The, the plan should change a little bit. And don't let the client get down on themselves because of that. Because that's, this is again, it's a, it's a, it's a non-judgmental environment that we're creating. Uh, finally, become amazing at using exercise response variables to redefine plans for a client. Show them this throughout the entire session. 
So you're, you're seeing the central nervous system take over a little too much, and you're seeing this or that happen when it shouldn't. Just, okay, we're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to change the resistance. We're going to change our modality, whatever change we're going to make. Be really amazing at that. It's a huge way, if you do it right, it's a huge, huge way to build your rapport with the client and to build more trust and more value. All right, finally, step six of six, master new skill sets quickly. Too many people, too many trainers say, oh, I'm not an expert in this or that, or I've ne I have never really worked with too many clients who are uh, prenatal or postnatal or whatever. There's a ton of literature out there. there are, we have a lot of uh, learning modules ourselves. Uh, there's so many books and videos and things. You can master the, the guidelines and the principles behind a, a, a medical disorder or a certain strategy for goal achievement or anything in a really short amount of time. Really think about how long it takes you to, to get through a book and to take notes and internalize it. And a lot of times you could do it in a day or in a weekend. So get some caffeine if you need to. Get into a quiet room. Tell the family you need some private time. And, and master new skill sets quickly. You'll be amazed at how much you can learn in a day, a weekend, or a week. And, and how, how much more value you can present to PPT and to our clients when you really hone in and start developing new skill sets. It's, it, frankly, this is what separates the disciplined from the undisciplined, from the non-disciplined, and really the winners from the losers are those who are constantly moving forward and those who are, are generally just staying still. They're the same trainer they were six months ago, and they missed opportunities for growth. So those are our six steps. I'm going to throw you a step seven because it's just too important to leave out, but really quick excitement, variety, and challenge. We talk about these in our online handbook. These are critical. Every session's got to be exciting. Excitement, variety, challenge. I'd introduce a new exercise every session for the first quarter with a client, and I'd introduce one at least every week in the second quarter and beyond. If there's a common exercise, do things with it. Add balance devices, uh, change the range of motion, add new resistances and such. You can use more bands. You can do things differently. Be creative. Let the client get excited and create those yes you can moments in every session. Not once a month, not once a week. Those yes you can moments where a client says, oh, I can't do this. And you're showing them, no, you actually can. It's going to be great. And they think, oh, I don't have the strength for that. I can't do this or I can't and you show them you absolutely can. Get them to believe in themselves. If this can happen every session, at least once, you're not gonna lose clients. Your clients will stay with you, they'll stay with us, and they will tell people about what we're doing for them. Finally, connect back to the client goals, everything they do. If a client does 20 minutes of cardio, remind them of those health benefits. Or have us, at PPT, have us remind them. We're more than happy to do it. Send us an update, say, hey, such and such client could probably use uh, a reminder uh, as to the benefits of 20 minutes of cardio and the right intensities. We will take care of that for you. So please keep this in mind, excitement, variety, challenge. Finally, if you thought this 23-minute video was helpful, and I hope you did, if you found it helpful, internalize it. Watch this video at least 10 to 15 times. If you got some use out of it, Keep these lessons in mind. Put reminders in your calendar. Put reminders in your phone. Take these lessons and make sure you don't just lose them because this video is not going to do you any good if it's in one ear and out the other in a week. So come back to it. Save it in your favorites. Do whatever you need to do. But make sure that if there's good information here, and I certainly think there is, if there's good information here for you that you revisit it, plug it into your DNA. Make it part of you. It can be the difference between making $100,000 a year with us and making 20. And it can be the difference between having a long-term career and having a very short one. So again, we're here to help. Good luck. Uh, please comment below if you need to, uh, if you have any thoughts, and certainly reach out to us. We are always here to help. Thank you.